know, streaming, people are like, oh, you're the fart queen. And I'm like, huh? They're like, look at you. And I'm like. Justice League was very colorful. Justice League was action filled. Justice League was very intense. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Falling Towers Watch the First Podcast, podcast which watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. But you still can. <laughs> you can. We are doing, of course, Superhero Month all month long for August. Today, we're doing Justice League, of course, the first episode entitled Secret Origins Part One. We have a very special guest today. It's Zombie Allure. Uh, Zombie is a, a cosplayer, model, Twitch streamer, all kinds of stuff. Welcome to the show, Zombie. Spelled with Hello, a U. Hello, everybody. Thanks. <laughs> uh, we also have Dr. Muhammad Noor, of course, as always, co-host of the show with a really cool DNA shirt. He's a occasional so Star Trek science advisor, as well as the vice provost for academic affairs at Duke University. What's up? Hey, always a pleasure to be on Falling Towers. Watch the first thing. And I, yes, I love this show. I love it so much. I may wear it for a couple of weeks in a row. <laughs> okay, I see what you're saying now. <laughs> I get it now. Okay, at first I was like, well, that I wouldn't brag. Uh, my name's Ryan T. Husk, and I'm just hanging out, you know, whatever. No big deal. It's kind of you're muggy awesome. over Come here. On. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all right, let's get into this. Everybody, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, give it a five star rating if you're listening in, uh, you know, and uh, tell everybody about the show. We we need the help. Uh, we only have a million subscribers. We're going for two million. Muhammad, where do we go with this? Ah, so now we're in a predicament, meaning that we have to predict what each other thought about this show without divulging whether we actually ourselves like it. Mm. Interesting. Mm. This is my favorite part of the show already. We start with the best stuff and then it's just kind of you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> so Dr. Noor and I have known each other for a few years. We know each other pretty well. Uh, Zombie, I knew you before your name was Zombie and, and you were wonderful, but we haven't spoken much recently. So we don't know each other terribly well. You and Muhammad go way back like about 11 minutes so Not even. <laughs> we're all going to predict what the other person thought of this show. Muhammad, I predict that you enjoyed this show. I think you like DC and Superman and Batman. I think that you like Martian Manhunter and all those things. Uh, Zombie, I think that you also enjoyed this show. I think that you were like, oh, that's fun. I like Batman. I want to predict you like Batman. That's my thinking. Uh, Wonder oh. Woman, too. I don't think you're a big Superman person. And I don't think you care about Martian Maneater or whatever. Uh, but those are my predictions. What do you predict, Muhammad? Hmm. So for Ryan, I think you're okay with it. I mean, I don't think you, you thought it was like the best show ever or anything. I think you're okay with it. I think you feel like it had a reasonable plot. And then and I know you're, uh, you're DC. He's not really your favorite, but I think this, yeah, this was okay. So, I mean, I think it'll be like above the midpoint there. Zombie, I mean, you seem pretty upbeat and positive and stuff like that. So, just based on that alone, I'm going to say that you liked it pretty well. I think, you know, maybe even a smidge more than Ryan. I don't think it's like your favorite show. I don't think you're going to, I don't think you're going to say at the very end of this show, I don't think you're going to say that this is something you're so eager to watch more of. But I think you're like, it's okay. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the ride. Mm. Those are my predictions. What about you, Zombie? Yeah, what do you think? Did I like it? Did yeah. Muhammad like it? Did we hate it? I think you guys both probably had a maybe somewhat difficult time keeping your guys' attention on it. I feel like it could have been a little bit more interesting for you guys, for you guys' taste in, like, comics and, like, the whole DC scene. So I think it was more of like, hmm, can I still focus? I think Wonder Woman probably got your guys' attention, but <laughs> and even Batman too. I mean, there's a couple things in there, but I think it was may maybe a little bit more could have been more focused, maybe. Okay. All right, everybody at home, you've gotten some pretty helpful hints here. Uh, kind of a mixed bag on what we thought. Nobody said 
that they thought somebody loved it or hated it. All kind of, you know, kind of like or kind of didn't like. So everybody at home, it's time for you to make your predictions in the live chat or in the comments below. Did I like this show? Did Muhammad like this terrible show? Just kidding. You don't know if I liked it yet. Uh, did Muhammad like this show? Did Zombie like this show? What do you think? Why or why not make your predictions now? Take your time. There's no rush. Type away. Uh, Muhammad's going to buy us all a little bit of time by telling us what this show is even a boot. Well, indeed. So, an astronaut on Mars encounters a large door with an inscription. And then something happens, but we don't know what. Later, back on Earth, Batman spies people being suspicious in a radio telescope lab. When he tries to stop them, they clearly have powers, destroy the facility, and get away. Superman volunteers to lead the world's nuclear disarmament program, but his mysterious, painful visions. Batman finds more suspicious activity in Star Labs, this time discovering that people are being replaced with alien shapeshifters. Then, giant meteors hit, and giant aliens come out, which seem indestructible, and they start destroying cities. Amidst it all, Superman gets another vision and flies away, and we discover he was receiving telepathic help messages from Martian Manhunter. The heroes are then cornered by aliens. To be continued. Whoa. Man, I wish I saw that show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So hopefully, everybody, you are almost done making your predictions. Um, now, geez, I have no idea where we're going. What's next, Muhammad? Oh, this part is my favorite part of the show. Zombie, don't be scared. So this is the part I like to call Expectation. We spend a little bit of time on what we expected before we saw the show, but not revealing what we thought. And then more time on what we actually get in, what we actually got as we watch the show. That's what knocked people over. <laughs> See, you had no idea his last name was Ali, did you? Yeah. All right. Are you? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, I was like. <laughs> we used to say it in elementary school all the time. Though. I bet. Aww. They're like, oh, I'm so clever. And here I am decades later going, hey, I just thought of something clever, everybody. Check this out. I mean, you uh, know, there are worse things to be called for sure. I mean, it's like, I'll mm -hmm. take it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Although I do feel like when we're kids. Anything somebody says in a mocking way, even if it's like shouldn't be taken as an insult, we take it like wrong. You know, like if somebody was like, hey, Superman, you'd be like, shut up. You're an idiot. Or something. <laughs> when we're kids. Yeah, pretty <laughs> you know. much. Right. Yeah. So. All right. So we'll compare and contrast what we expected versus what we got. So first things first, Dr. Noor, Muhammad. What did you expect before you watched this first episode, if anything? So I had watched this before with my son when he was younger. Uh, and I remember watching uh, Justice League and then watching Justice League Unlimited. And, and you'll remember, Ryan, that we did Justice League Unlimited not that long ago right. here on, on the Watch the First podcast as well. Um, I remember that Justice League didn't have as many of the superheroes as Justice League Unlimited. It was more like the focal set of, I guess, I guess we can see here in the picture, about eight of them or so. In terms of the specific plot for this episode, no recollection whatsoever. Absolutely not. I mean, <laughs> anyway, I figured it was something that involves Superman and Batman and all those guys, but I had no recollection whatsoever what it, was be, what it would be about. I didn't even remember whether it was fully episodic or whether it was more arc based. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Find out what I actually got to. Mm -hmm. mm. So, Zombie, uh, before you watch this first episode, what did you expect, if anything? Did you expect anything? I mean, the name kind of like gave me an idea, but overall, I did not expect anything because the way that it started versus the way that it kind of went through. I think I'm more used to how they normally portray when it comes to like the shows of how they do it. It's it's really never how you think it's going to be. So like that's kind of like how like it's like, oh, man, I was wrong versus like, oh, I knew it. I didn't know it. I didn't. Mm. I, anything that I predicted, it was totally the opposite. Okay. Pretty much for myself. Mm -hmm. I was like, dang, what? So Interesting. Like, it well, was really. I'll tell you all what I expected, if anything. Uh, I don't think I had seen this before. 
I think I'd heard of it. I think I remember it existing because I remember, you know, certain aspects of it without ever having seen it. And we did see Justice League Unlimited, which I think came out, whatever, a few years later. This is like 2003, I think. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know, I liked uh, Super Friends when I was a kid. So, you know, I, DC, yeah, Muhammad, like you said, it's not really my thing as much as Marvel. Marvel's the way to go. But, I, you know, I'm happy with I love superhero crews more than just an individual superhero. Uh, so what I expected was to enjoy it. I expected to just sit back, relax and watch the super friends with, you know, minus a couple of the super friends, plus a couple others. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's what we expected. Muhammad, what did you actually get upon viewing this show? Ah, so <laughs> I actually enjoyed it a great deal. I'll say that right off the bat, just in terms just, so there's no suspense on that. A lot happens. Actually, arguably, I'd say too much happens, but like it was still a lot happens. There was a lot going on. I mean, you can see even from my intro there, I actually had to cut down the intro I was giving to what happens. Like so much happened in that 25 minutes or whatever it was. Um I like the intro there on Mars. I thought that was interesting. Just, you know, it's kind of a, a, a little teaser, like, oh, something big is going on there. And then all of a sudden, like we're on Earth, like, you know, left us with a little bit of like a tease, a, a tantalizing of like, I wonder what happens next. Um, for me, actually, I, 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 unlike you, Ryan, I tend to slightly prefer DC just because I grew up so much more heavily with DC. I think actually Marvels are higher quality, but I actually, but DC to me is just more familiar. So mm -hmm. for them having a familiar character, it's like, oh, yeah, Batman's back. Oh, yeah, Superman's get back. That was great. I found the plot engaging because there was, a, there was a lot happening. I kind of had to focus because there was so much happening all the time. Like, oh, now we're over here. Oh, wait. What's this plot? Oh, okay, how does this connect to the pre what? Okay, which could be taken as a negative, but I actually personally kind of liked it because I was already pretty favorable. Um, I liked that it was an or an origin story for the series in a sense, and it kind of teased these other characters. Like there was a little tease there of Flash, there was a little tease there of Wonder Woman, but I didn't fully develop it. It was very heavily focused on uh, Superman, Batman, and then at the very end, bringing in Martian Manhunter. We didn't get anything with Green Lantern or anything like that. But overall, it just really left me wanting more. Um, so those are on the positive. On the negative, I didn't love the aliens. <laughs> I was kind of like, eh. you know, the shapeshifter things. I, I actually was very confused on the whole Carter thing. And I think I figured it out like a little bit after I watched it. So like, oh, so I guess he was maybe replaced by an alien. Maybe he's one of those ones that was in one of those sacks. But I figure it's going to get uh, elaborated later. And again, it was a lot. It definitely took like, attention <laughs> there's so much happening but overall pretty positive all right sorry we're just typing zombie. something very quickly but zombie it's time for you to tell everybody what you actually got you know you told us what you expected which was you know a little bit of uncertainty here or there but what did you actually get upon viewing this first episode I got a couple laughs because like in the beginning I was just like, oh my God, okay, they're they're here, they're outer space. And then like that escalated super quickly. I was like, oh, okay, okay, where are we going with this? And then as it proceeds, I'm just like, well, where's Batman? Because like, come on. And with a lot of the like how Muhammad was like, it was focusing on specific characters. And I think it was trying to get the viewers like prepared to be like, what's to come next, you know? So I didn't like the aliens either. I felt like, like really, come on, it it been done better before. So like, it kind of like broke it down to like, it wasn't organic. Like I kind of felt like it was like more of like alien related, like the way that they try to go about it. And then like, that kind of like took away when like they were in the sacks and I was just like, it was just too fast for the understanding of why they were even there. Like th there was no explanation on like why I obviously they want to take over Earth, but like was it is it a positive takeover or is was it not? There was a couple laughs, obviously with Batman. There's always like comedy within that, but more or less of like it was just too much different like shots taken at like it didn't give the viewer enough time to comprehend what was going on. And I think that's probably why they were trying to make you focus so much was to allow you to actually get like one-on-one -on -one with what was going on. So I think that kind of like grabbed 
my attention was is that when it started and then it that kind of like the beginning like ended and then we're on earth and i'm just like okay what what's batman doing like why is he just chilling and just observing like why doesn't he have help like i was like bro like okay what's going on with superman like why did they still not trust him like what is going on so then like I feel like it's just preparing everybody to know what characters are actually going to be within like this whole like series. And like, I was more confused on what was going on with Superman. Cause I was like, ain't nothing affect him, but like kryptonite. Right. So like right. that mm. kind of confused me. And I was just like, okay. Um, now he's like, I don't know. It was just like really like off. Like there was no really like goal in mind of what needed to be done because every other character was involved with what they were doing. Like they were basically having their own separate lives. And obviously now they're going to have to come together to like do something. I don't know what they're planning on doing, but that was pretty much it. It was clips that were like, like how you said the flash and then like wonder woman and things like that. It was, it wasn't enough to like explain who they were if for someone that was new. Cause I've never watched any DC like at all Ooh. growing up, but I am familiar. You know what I mean? So like I had to like put little pieces here together here and there. And I'm just like, well, what's going to happen? Okay. Like that's pretty much it. Hmm. Interesting. I think I kind of had you pegged for a Batman fan. It seems like you're kind of sneaking in a little affinity for Batman, but we'll, uh, cover that a little later we'll see uh, i'll tell y'all what i actually got um i was kind of bored i was kind of bored uh when muhammad said that there was a lot that happened my first thought was shit really let me check my notes and i checked my notes and i'm i think you're right i think a lot did happen but i didn't really i don't really remember that because i was kind of bored like i don't watch superhero shows to watch normal people and as soon as they opened up on like Mars, I was excited to see Mars, but I'm not excited to see regular people walking around. You know, I, I, there, there's so many superheroes out there. There are so many that I'm always wondering, why don't you just have a show about all the superheroes? I want to see all the superheroes. I don't need to see Jim and I don't need to see Todd. Or I just want to see superheroes doing superhero things and fighting and being friends and whatever. You know, I've got a very simple mind that way. So it, it was it was OK. In my opinion, uh, I felt like they were the aliens were not exciting, but they were creative in their design and color. And I remember thinking that the animation was really good in that opening sequence on Mars. And then as soon as the superheroes were introduced in the superhero song. I was like, oh, take that back. Those guys are oddly shaped with their gigantic shoulders. And that's what I remembered from when I think I saw the imagery when it first came out back in the day. I remember thinking like, why are their shoulders so gigantic? This is weird and creepy. They've like deformed or something, but they're not supposed to be. So that was, you know, all my nitpicks in a nutshell was that I was like, okay. And we didn't get to see all the superheroes. It was just Batman and Superman. And I don't really care about Batman. I know that's heresy. People love Batman, but I don't really care about Batman. Superman's okay. I don't really care about any. I, I want to meet. I like the Flash and Green Lantern. I think that's like Hawk Woman or Hawk Girl or something. Martian Manhunter. Didn't. I just want to know about new people. Batman and Superman. Don't care. I like them in, as a crew. Anyway. <clears throat> That's what I got. I was kind of curmudgeonly about this. What do you got, Muhammad? You're about to ask something. No, well, I was thinking one thing that got me that I actually really appreciated about it was I felt I felt like it led me in a direction which was which was not correct. And I actually respected that because it, it looked mm. to me like, oh, maybe Superman's gonna get mind control because like, oh, all of a sudden he's really important and all this stuff is focused on him and Carter's assigned this stuff. And I thought it was gonna be like, oh, now like the bad guys are controlling Superman or something like that. But that was completely not what was happening with him with those little flashes. It wasn't that mm -hmm. at all. And actually, yeah. I respected that. Like, oh, actually, it was a good thing happening to Superman in that he was getting connected with one of the other good guys. It just, it, for some reason, it was a painful process. I'm not quite sure why, but 
That's right. That's me. I, I took that as a positive because that was a, it was a misdirect that I completely went with, and I thought, oh, okay, so Superman's going to actually be being controlled and blah blah blah. Because that would be the typical like that's what would have been happening in Super Friends back in the eighties. It would definitely have been that. Yeah, <laughs> that's have why had time to develop it. I kind of agreed with Zombie there when they did that. My first thought was, what the heck? Superman's a wimp now. <laughs> like I thought he only had one weakness, which was kryptonite, and and suddenly in this whole episode, he's practically use he's like a wimp he's got oh my brain oh i saw things <laughs> and he's collapsing and i was like i just remember thinking is this whole series just gonna is superman just gonna be like one of the wimpiest characters that would just be so weird he only has one superpower basically is that he can do everything <laughs> he's, he's all Pretty powerful much. and but in this yeah. he's just some dork well, that that was the running of the thing that I laughed out, out loud the hardest for. It was like after that whole thing with the the radio telescope lab, Superman came to help, but he was no help whatsoever. Like Batman had to like stop what he was doing to basically save Superman. And then the answer before he flies away is like, "Call if you need any more help." And he's just like, "Right." <laughs> I thought that was great with his super long, weirdly long ears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys, it's important to note who our favorite character was. Muhammad, did you have a favorite character? I mean, normally I always say Green Lantern, but he wasn't in the show. <laughs> so it can't be him. <laughs> I think for this one, I'd say Batman. Superman in this one was not that interesting. I mean, we didn't get enough of Martian Manhunter. And so it's really just down to like Batman or the bad guys. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I guess Batman. Yeah. <laughs> What about you, Zombie? Did you have a favorite? Are you a Batman lover? Are you a Superman I'm lover? Batman. Did you like Batman all the way? I feel like Batman <laughs> in like the DC world brings us people to connect with him. Like when he was like laying in the stretcher and he's like, "You don't do it." Like she was like, oh! and then I was like, "Comedy." It, he, I don't know. He just brings something different to the Flash. Does too. I mean, honestly, like oh, yeah. I think I'm Flash is growing on me way more because he's it's more of like the way that they target his character. It, it's more of like towards like the youth of like comedy and like those that get it, get it. Those that don't, don't like Superman and Batman are like old school. Like they're always going to be old school, but Superman always is like the mean unky, like, like, like the grumpy <laughs> grandpa, like type, but then like, he's trying to be funny and it's not, it's just weird. It's awkward. Like it really is like, like, come on, like your your image is supposed to be like serious. So that's the only role he could really ever play. And like how he portrayed himself in the show, I was just like, I was starting to be like, oh, okay, well, yeah, trust him. But then when he's over there going through all of it, I was just like, okay, so what's hurting him? You know, like if someone else could like target him in that way, he's not really super, is he? You know what I mean? So like they kind of like took that power away from him. So now he has to like be humble. But Batman all the way. I, I love Batman. When I first cosplayed, actually, I cosplayed Batgirl. So, like, oh, oh. Batman is the, Very nice. the cup of tea for me. I, I love him so much. Even though you watched that like, series, the Batgirl series that was on? I have not gotten into no DC shows at all, but this is like, gotten, like, me interested just because I never had access to, like, any type of TV growing up. So, I'm just like, now, like, Netflix is, like, blooming crazy, and I'm just like, ooh. But, Batman and The Flash for me. If I didn't grow up knowing who Batman was, I would have automatically like directed my favorite to be Flash just because like he was like, oh, like, come on, like ADHD, calm down. Like, <laughs> but it, I relate to that. So like, it's more of like, it, it would have been Flash, but with history with Batman, I, I can't, I cannot say that he wasn't my favorite because he was, especially because mm -hmm. he got me to laugh in the show. <laughs> Over that one little sentence, I was like, that made it for me, that that made it a little cherry on the top, you know? So, yeah, well, it was Don't Batman even first. think about it. Quote. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, you know, I kind of agree. I think it's Flash time. And mm -hmm. uh, when I was a kid, I think my favorite was The Flash. I think I also liked Shazam because they he looked cool, but I didn't know much about him. Uh, and, uh, I'm going to pick the flash by virtue of default, even though he had one little dumb scene and wonder woman had one little dumb scene and Martian Manhunter had one little dumb scene. Otherwise it was the Batman and Superman show. But guess what? To me, I was like, neither of those guys are really very likable. 
uh, not, you know, they're how they're usually depicted. Sure. But in this episode, I was like, mm. so it's not really fair that I'm picking the flash. It's not like he did anything great, but I'm just being, I'm like, I'm like, if I had to pick somebody, I'm going to go with the one that I liked before uh, flash. So he seemed fun. I wish we would have seen green lantern and hot girl. Uh, I wish we would have met all of them, but they're doing the, I think it's like a continuation. I think it's like a three episode arc. So they're playing the long game. They're going to introduce them one by one and combine them. And it's going to be great. It would make like a, a great, you know, hour and 10 minute movie or something like that. If you put them all together, but we just watched that first episode and in that first episode, nobody really grabbed me. Maybe Mr. Carter. I don't know. But definitely Flash is the way to go for me. Hopefully, they portray him well. Muhammad, you're looking at your notes. You've got some nitpicks to throw at us. Many nitpicks. I was just, I was just oh, going, I went through to see if there was other things I wanted to make sure to bring up there. I mean, you mentioned the Flash. It was interesting. They had a reference to Star Labs. So, like, back to the, the Flash things there. So, that, that was a connection to it. Um, one thing I like about the show, but we didn't actually see it here, is is the version of Green Lantern they have is the John Stewart version. So instead of Hal Jordan, so that, I like that because I think he's more interesting. But yeah, I was just I was just walking, I was just glancing down my notes to see if there's specific things I wanted to bring up in particular. Okay, well, you being a scientist, Muhammad, I actually had a couple questions for you. Sure. Let's say a comet. No, not a comet, an asteroid, because com meteor, meteor, because comet yeah. is ice, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, so let's say a meteor uh, flies down from space and crashes into Earth. Mm -hmm. A, would it only create a little strip of damage? <laughs> no. So if you think about it, like if you go back 65 B, million years would ago. It, would it only kind of ricochet for about 300 feet and then, or would no, it destroy, or would it destroy pretty much, you know, all life in that region? Very much. So if you think of 65 million years ago, we had that asteroid impact there in Mexico. And that's what wiped out the dinosaurs on the whole planet. <laughs> so, you <can> tell I mean, <laughs> now, that a was a bigger, extreme. I believe that was like a five or 10 mile wide. That was probably a lot bigger than this one yes. was. But even still, just the impact would have been dramatically higher. One positive thing yeah. on the science side, actually, I looked up because they mentioned uh, in the very opening scene, they said that they're on Mariner Valley of Mars. Like, is that really a place? And I looked it up. Yep, it's it's actually right on the equator of Mars. Like, go for them. Good for them on it. That's cool. There was one scene just for a second where it looked like they were jumping super high. And I was like, wait, Martian gravity is like half of Earth. So, like, so this guy's got to weigh like 90 pounds. I mean, he's not, he's not that <laughs> high. <laughs> but then later scenes, they were just kind of walking a little bit more normally. Like, okay, that's that's it. That seems better. <laughs> I had the opposite thing reaction where I was like, I was like, isn't the gravity on Mars about a third? Maybe it's half, but that's just what I was thinking it's, it's about. Like, it. It's like 38% or 39% or something like that. So I was thinking like, isn't that the case? So wouldn't they be walking a little floatier? And then right then they started walking. I was like, oh, thanks. Yeah. You did do it. They did really <laughs> just, extreme ones though. I was like, yeah. Okay. No. Where he jumped like 30 feet. Yeah. Like, like, what was that Disney movie on that took place on Mars? That John something? It really, John Carter, I think maybe it is. Somebody in the Disney live chat, movie? everybody let me know in the live chat, the movie I'm thinking of. It looked beautiful. It was maybe 10 years ago. It looked beautiful. It was amazing. It took place on Mars and they had like flying, you know, airships and all that. But I was so freaking annoyed because they said, oh, the gravity is less on Mars. So dude was jumping 100 feet into the air to let. And I said, no, it doesn't make you superhuman. You can just maybe jump twice as high. So you're, yeah. you got a 30 inch vertical now, bro. Not a 3000 inch <laughs> vertical. Anyway, John yeah. Carter, I think it might've been called. Okay. Uh, anyway, this episode. <laughs> mm -hmm. Senator John Carter. Zombie, did you have any nitpicks? I'll nitpick the crap out of this. Did you, was there anything mm -hmm. that you kind of rolled your eyes at? It was the aliens. It really was because like, one like why you make them look like that like there was no really like were their eyes or like any but then there was like other other ways of how to explain like how the aliens were like there's different species within that one like alien like master and who is the one controlling like i make it was it was really just the aliens because i am more i'm familiar of how dc works i'm very much sure that they focus more on like dark gloomy 
colors and it just it's more like intensified with the colors so like with the with the aliens being the color that it was it was like it could have been any other color that that stood out versus blended in you know other than that it was just really that because mm. everything else was just normal like cartoonish type ways so it was just that the- do you all think the alien dog is the same species as the other aliens, or do you think it was just a... Uh, oh, yeah, I don't remember this movie at all. Yeah. I'm Good. Never saw You're it. lucky. I hated <laughs> it. Everybody was raving. I mean, it looked gorgeous, and it was amazing, and I love. they had so many cool concepts, but it was especially the jumping that I was like, this is uh, not... This doesn't... Anyway, calm down. Your question, was about, <laughs> your question was about the dog. I'm guessing that it's on the same team, Maybe it's mm-hmm. an offshoot alien of the other aliens, but it's got to be on the same team because otherwise, who was it? Superman or Batman? That was Batman right. that was getting beaten up. First thing he sees a dog and he's like, "Oh my god!" Like he sees a giant monster and he's like, "I'll handle this." A dog shows up and he's like, "Holy shit! I need help! I can't handle a lab." Yeah, that's the humane in it, though, right? That's what makes it human familiar. Like, even though he's a, we're talking about Batman, right? I think mm-hmm. it was Batman. Yeah. Okay. So like that's what makes it more of like relatable. And that's I think that's why a lot of people like like the characters are pretty much in here versus I mean the other alien dude, I don't even know who that is. But like it <laughs> makes it relatable. So that's why I think that's why when they he seen the dog, it was like, Oh, well, if I get rabies, I'm dead. Like they there's a ninety nine percent fatality on that. So like Versus the alien, like, come on, he spiced those, like, all the time. So it's, he normalized more of, like, crazier things versus something that is so small, like a dog. And then that's what made me, I was like, bro, like, he's bad. Why are you growling? Like, he's on your side. He's trying to help your <laughs> homies. Like, he don't take him out the side. But you got, you, you it was just, it could have been more, it could have been something else, like, like a security guard or something and been like, oh, and then incorporate more, like, people normal people in it but i guess they only do that for clips or news or like reporting like that like the reporter pissed the reporter got me so angry i was just like bro like calm down like relax he's like are you gonna do anything i was just like well duh that's their job like you're do your job let them focus on theirs but it was a reporter too reporter and the aliens for me that it sounds like a band it. reporter <laughs> and the aliens it's interesting just how ineffective all the weapons were against the giant aliens too. Like, I was they did nothing. <laughs> just going to ask you this as a as yeah. a scientist, Muhammad. Yeah. I I don't know anything about this. This is not a leading question again. But if you're a giant alien, let's say thirty feet tall or something, and you're wibbly wobbly kind of thing, and jets shoot missiles at you that are let's say going four hundred miles per hour, and those things hit the alien now. Assuming that this is correct, that it makes no damage on them whatsoever, fine. Maybe they're made out of something unbelievable and it doesn't harm them. However, my understanding of physics, and correct me if I'm wrong, would they not budge or would they at least kind of move a little bit unless they're just incredibly massively dense? But the the way I saw it is I felt like even if they don't get damaged, they sh- could still get knocked back from the impact. But maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I was I mean, I, I'm not thinking from a phys- from a truly physics standpoint, but it seemed like that should happen. So otherwise, I mean, like as you said, it, it's it's getting hit. It doesn't matter exactly what it's. I mean, it's clearly it's, it's getting hit by something solid, but then it also explodes. And they're standing on those very thin, spindly little right. legs, so it does like feel like pounds. it should have at least moved back. <laughs> They're like yeah. 30 feet tall and 40 pounds and made out of yeah. like cookie dough. Yeah. They're delicious yeah, like said, aliens, unless, though. Unless, unless the mass of the body is just tremendous, where it just absolutely holds it down. But that, that seems improbable. Otherwise, it, it seems like it should be sinking into the ground as it's stepping. It didn't seem like it was Same. especially doing that. Yeah. Same. Superhero shows better adhere to the laws of physics or we're pissed. Cart- children's cartoons better do it. Anyway, I there were just a few I things. Noticed, like that. Did you guys catch where the second one came from that was there in the in the first city? And all of a sudden there were two. Like, wait, where did the second one come from? Did it come out of the, the yeah. rest of the well, meteor? I, I, what I happened it. was that a second it showed a second one coming out of the meteor, right? Oh, okay. But then that. when it did that, it came up and then there were three. 
Exactly. And that, exactly. And I was going to say, then there was a third all of a sudden, too. Yeah so. yeah. so I guess they just were like, cut to one minute later when a third one yeah. pops out. They're like magic. <laughs> Ta da, three. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Were there any other final thoughts on this? I, I wish we had seen more of our superhero friends, but I understand why they didn't do that because they were going to introduce them one by one. So they all get their moment in time. Uh, the Mars stuff looked beautiful. Uh, the scientists were eventually cool when they became weird alien monsters. Anyway, um, yeah, those are those were my nitpicks. But I think it's time to move forward, Muhammad. What do you think? I think okay. so. I think it's time to ask Zombie about her. Oh, what oh. a deal. Zombie, mm-hmm. it's time to talk about you for a bit. Uh, you're a cosplayer, you're a model, you go to conventions, you're a Twitch streamer. Can you mm-hmm. tell us, what's the deal with Twitch? Muhammad and I have never, I don't, well, I can't speak for Muhammad, but I don't think so. I certainly have never streamed on Twitch. What's that all about? Isn't that a gaming site? It is basically, well, it's not for just gaming. It's a streaming platform where you could create your own community. Um, you could sell your own merch. You could um donate to like your favorite streamers you could just get that one-on-one time with pretty much entertainment they have um they have gamers they have cosplayers that do their their cosplay outfits on there they even have like eating shows so it's like think of it like youtube but live but because i know youtube does live too and uh, honestly like twitch is like so saturated now like everything and anything is on there which is like kind of scary. It's everything. And it's very hard for like creators and like people that stream on there because like they, they kind of target the ones that are trying to be upcoming versus the ones that are like already active and like have like a, like a presence there. And they like let people get away. It's there's a lot of favoritism for sure on Twitch, but I can't Mm. say too much about, my experience now because i've honestly i haven't streamed on there but from what i've heard from friends and what i've heard from other streamers is that it's gotten to the point where your whole goal as being a twitch streamer is to be partner like i went to twitchcon back in 2018 and i love the experience everything about it i just loved i adored it i got to meet a couple like big name streamers but it's just like now there's just so many different platforms for for streaming so like the way that they work is like oh well be be partner but you can't stream anywhere else you have to stream here first you can't use any of that content now you have to wait for a while there's too many roles and stuff like that but for me like my whole goal was like just to be affiliated so that's what what Mm -hmm. i am i'm affiliated on there nice and so for sure it's just like it kind of sucks because like i haven't been on there in a while and i kind of like don't know if that was kind of a good thing because a lot of things have changed. Like a lot of like the rules and regulations and policies have changed. And um, a lot of the supporters and a lot of the people that have streamed kind of like left, they like all basically went to YouTube. Hmm. So I'm like, am I going to like still do Twitch or am I going to like start YouTubing like my streams? Cause like, I think a lot of people are suggesting more on YouTube because obviously like just the presence of YouTube alone, like, there's more exposure versus like Twitch is limited. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, that in a nutshell is like what it's mainly like about, but now it's like saturated, like everything and anything's on there versus like before when I was streaming, it was morally based off of like um, live chats and like game streams and things like that. Mm-hmm. Actually, now you know, I was about to ask you about because I mean that seems when I think of Twitch that tends to be what I think of is somebody playing a video game yeah. and they're talking they're talking with their fans and their fans are engaging on the side but most most of the screen as you're watching is you know whatever is happening in the video game what in, for your personal Twitch stream that you had in the past and for what you're planning in the future what what's the sort of content you're anticipating having in there and what content I'm gonna go back to streaming I I still have like two games I haven't even finished I've been I, when I stopped well I didn't really mean to stop. But when it did occur from when me not being able to go online, I was streaming The Last of Us 2 and I was streaming Resident Evil. And like, 
I feel like for my streams, I stream more of like gameplay and like more of like interaction with my fans. And I've done a lot of mukbang on there too. Or I'll like, I'll dress up in like cosplay and then I'll like stream versus me dress up in cosplay and like conversate and do mukbangs on there. That's kind of mm-hmm. like my niche. And like, honestly, like for that, I... I didn't know I was getting into a different sector of communities because the way I am on stream, like everybody loves how I am, but I don't really hold back on my, my, my belches are like when I fart. And so long story with that is just like when I was streaming, people were like, Oh, you're the fart queen. And I'm like, huh? They're like, look at you. And I'm like, look at me. What? And they're like, look, on, look at this link. And I'm like, Oh, okay. What is it? Is am I going to get scammed? And then it's of my clips of my streaming getting like thousands of views because people do collaborate or or compilation videos of my stream. So like, they'll like take my clips and make all these cute, funny videos and like people are into it. And I'm like, shut up. No way. Am I getting fans from me burping and farting online? Because I don't care. I've been doing this since like, since I started my YouTube stream, like a long time ago, like back in 2013, I just don't care. Like it's just, it's, it's just the human body, but I embrace it because I just love it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, I think with, with that being connected to my streams, I kind of made it a part of my niche. Like if I fart, I'll be like, clip it. Or if I burp, clip it. And then by the end of the month, I got people posting my stuff on their channel and they're getting thousands and millions of views and likes. And I'm like, what's up? Uh-huh. What's happening? Like, can you help me edit? Like, cause it takes a lot of time to like, be a, a streamer in general, whatever social media platform you work on. So mm-hmm. my my streams would be around cosplay, gaming, and mukbang and farts and burps. So that's so, pretty much it. Yeah. Zombie, what do you uh, eat uh, ahead of time to like load up or prepare? I don't. No, I'm just, it's just, no, no. Um, no, I wanted to ask but, you see, about. A lot of people suggest like high fiber stuff. And that's the thing that what I love about my community and like, I recently changed their what they were called, but before there were my wonderful fuck faces. I've been naming them that since like 2013, but I'm trying to like be more like more professional in a sense. So I call them my benevolent acolytes. So mm. I call them that now, but they are so caring. They're like, you need to drink water. You like they're trying to like make it make me prepare to like, oh, you need to eat a lot of beans. You need to do this, you need to do that. And I'm like, no. I've had a couple of fans actually like what is it? Like the places where you can send food and like to your house. I've had people do that to where they're like, they'll be like, Hey, if I order you something, will you eat it online? And then like, wait, oh, is out? that those and eat I'm... streams that you're talking Well, the hang on. Thing, yeah. before we get too deep into uh, all of that, because everybody stay tuned. You never know. We might get a farter belch later on in this episode, but I wanted to ask you, we met uh, working a convention or two in the past and you were doing a lot of cosplay do you have a favorite cosplay character that you like to do exactly. or two or three? I, I have my main one, which is Firewire from Shadowhunter Comics. It's um, she's basically um, part of this team where she is a computer tech and she helps locate these um, critters and stuff that need to be assassinated. And so like it was she's like my favorite of all time. Like everybody basically knows me from that and, or my Harley Quinn's, any of the Harley Quinn's I ever cosplay. Like I just love with a passion. And then the last one I think is, um, it's hard. Cause I, I mean, I cosplayed a lot and I think it would have to be Sakura from Street Fighter. Those oh. would be the three. Cause like her, she's just funky and I like it. But it would be Firewire, any Harley Quinns that I've ever done, and um Sakura. Mm-hmm. Those would be like my top main three that I I, I love cosplaying for sure. So right. you stream cosplay, are you like in character or what what is it you're streaming? I mean, it feels like a still thing, so I wasn't sure why. What, what are you actually it, it's what's the concept? it's weird because like all the characters that I normally go with is like somewhat close to personality. So like Firewire, she's into tech and thing. I love like anything like technology. Like I'm I'm savvy at it. I've been I've been at it for a long time. Like I built my computer, like everything. And well, Harley Quinn, like she's just 
crazy. So that yeah. says enough in itself. And Sakura, she's just a she's a street fire. She's like she's badass. So like that's like more of it. Any cosplays I've ever done, I feel like if I don't relate, I won't cosplay. Like I can't because I I as a person for me personally as a cosplayer, I can't get into a character and then have someone ask me that. Because if they do, and if I have nothing to say, I feel not only am I disrespecting the character, but I'm disrespecting the love that someone has. And I take that away from their experience because I can't relate. So that was that's my rule. I don't know how everyone else works as cosplayers. But for me, I really would have to have a specific connection with the character in order to cause like I will never cosplay like specific characters that are totally the opposite of what I'm about. I I, mm-hmm. I just can't do it. Other cosplayers don't have a problem because it's fan base and, you know, that's their income. But for me, like, I would really have to have even like a little bit of connection. You know what I mean? Like, I can't cosplay Batman, but I like Batman so much. I cosplayed Batgirl and I loved it. And all I did when I was at the con was like this. That's all I knew because that's all I, come on, want to fight. But there was more to her than just, putting her hands up and squaring up with somebody like, and I felt bad because I did that pose throughout the whole day. And then everybody sent me the pictures and I looked like the same like pose. And I saw I had to educate and learn more about the characters and things like Mm. that. Well, everybody at home, if you'd like to educate yourself and learn more about zombie here, Check her out uh, at allmylinks.com. That's allmylinks.com slash zombie allure. That is zombie spelled with a U and allure, A-L-L-U-R-E, Z-U-M-B-I-E, A-L-L-U-R-E. She's got a ton of links. Whatever you want, she's got cosplayer, (laughs) model, gamer, streamer, YouTuber, content creator, great storyteller. But now, everybody, it is time for... The bottom line. There's the line of the bottom. It's a terrible twos, everybody knows. The final two questions of the episode. And they go a little something like this. Question number one, Dr. Muhammad Noor, on a scale of one to 10, zombie, this is the tough one. We really get on the hot seat here. On a scale of one to 10, Dr. Noor, what would you give this first episode of Justice League? I'll go with what I wrote down. I wrote down an 8.8. I actually enjoyed it a a good deal. And I, I understand that I'm biased because I like the DC characters and it felt like a coming home, like, oh, there's Batman, oh, there's Superman, and tastes of some of the others, too. But I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I did think it probably would have been better if they they had a little bit less, because <laughs> it did feel kind of chaotic. But I still very thoroughly enjoyed it. I, yeah. And what was that, an 8? Eight? 8.8. Wow! Yeah, I really enjoyed it a lot. Okay, I'm putting it in. <laughs> uh, what about you, Zombie, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10? What would you give this first episode? A three. Ooh. Just because like, even though there was, a, I know how people do shows and stuff. So like they tried way too hard to keep you focused. And if they would have just let it ride, it would have been like maybe a five, but a three for me, just because I felt like it was just too much for the time that it was, you know? So mine, sure. mine would be a hard three out of mm-hmm. a 10. For sure. <laughs> a hard three. Muhammad's got a hard 8.82. He was very sure about it. He was, he was but I'm going to give it a soft 4.4 because my number is very subjective. Uh, I feel like, I feel like my opinion of it is lower than maybe what it deserved, but it was hard to tell because I just really didn't. I wanted to enjoy the show. I think I just put up too much pressure. I'm like, cool, superhero cartoon. I'm going to have so much fun. This is so great. You know, I drank a bunch of pineapple juice in preparation. I don't know what that means, but I did not do that. And so, and it was just kind of hanging out. I think I, I think about two thirds of the way through, I just started getting so bored, but it's too bad. I want to like it, uh, but it's a 4.4 from me, not horrible but uh exactly half of what muhammad gave mm-hmm. for those of you keeping track at home but those are our scores one to ten here's the big one this is where the pressure really mounts 
for the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of Justice League. But now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet, Dr. Muhammad Noor, would you of your own volition watch the second episode? I 100% would. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I 100% would. Realistically, I probably won't because I, I've seen the whole series before. And yeah, I might enjoy watching it again, but I'm not that eager to do so. But in terms of inclination, which is why we, what we're aiming for with this, would I watch the second? 100%, yeah. All right. Mm. What about you, zombie? 100%, one way or the other? I wasn't... Oh, bithy bithy. Just... Just because, like, I feel like I should just give it a chance. I mean, I stuck through the first one, right? Like, normally when I start something, I have to finish it, even if it's, like, something, like, I'm not really into, just because I want to have hope that it might be something different. So it would be 50-50 for me. I would really have to, like, sit down and be focused to not get distracted or lose interest. Because so I lost a lot of interest in it as well. Mm-hmm. Like at the very end, I was just like, okay, when is it going to end? Like, because it felt so long, but then so fast. So then I was just like, well, maybe I didn't give it enough time. But no, it I would be 50-50 for me. Sounds like a sounds like a, a yes-ish, but you seem to be a glass half full kind of person. Sounds like what you said in a nutshell was that you weren't really into it but even if you're not really into it if you start something you're gonna finish it so fine <laughs> so, yeah, kind of, we're starting already <laughs> yeah might as well just do it uh yeah. for me it's a no because i'm like mm, this thing dumb now i wouldn't be opposed to watching it if somebody were watching it i would happily wait because i have a feeling it's going to get better and more enjoyable i do uh, but based on this, I probably would not. I'd probably move on gleefully. But that's it for us, everybody. Can you believe it? We got through this episode. If you'd like us to review a show, in the comments below, just type WTF and the show you'd like us to review, especially if it's a superhero show. September is going to be Saturday morning cartoons, which is funny because we just finished doing some superhero cartoons. So some of those can maybe blend together. But Saturday morning cartoons for September, make your suggestions in the comments below and where we can find those things. Like you would have said Justice League on, what was it, Netflix? Netflix. Yeah. Yes. So that's it, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you are subscribed and you hit the bell notification, the bell icon for notifications. And you give us a five-star rating if you're listening in. What I'm trying to say is this podcast did make me giggle. This podcast was an opportunity to make a new friend. Oh, this podcast was a good experience. Yes, all three were truthful. First mm-hmm. time ever in the history of the WTF podcast. Uh, thanks, everybody. We will see you next time. And remember what Mr. Michael Canyon Rosenberg always likes to say. Forget to be an organ donor and, and don't forget to watch the first of things. All right, now freeze frame like your favorite character, even if they weren't in this episode. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) I realize I don't... Smile and breathe.